Many say that good can come out of the bad. And as I look at the history of one of the oldest sodas I have ever tried, that quote may be true. As Dr. Pepper Snapple Group's website says, without the Civil War, there would be no Verners, a ginger ale that has been around since 1866. In the 1860s, Abraham Lincoln is elected president. The Civil War is beginning as the states succeed from the Union. And a clerk named James Verner is working at a Higby and Stearns drugstore in Detroit. The last one doesn't seem that big now, does it? Well, it's more important than you might think. In the early 1860s, James Verner experimented with flavors in an attempt to duplicate a popular ginger ale imported from Dublin, Ireland. But while Verner was working on this drink, he was interrupted by the war. Werner was called off to war and joined the 4th Michigan Cavalry on August 14, 1862, as a hospital steward. But before he was sent off, Werner stored the syrup base of 19 ingredients, including ginger, vanilla, and other natural flavorings, in an oak cask. While at war, Werner was promoted to second lieutenant on September 20, 1864. On May 10, 1865, the 4th Michigan Cavalry captured Jefferson Davis. Werner wasn't part of it though, as he had been captured prior to this event. Werner was discharged on July 1st, 1865. After returning from battle four years later, he opened a keg and found a drink inside that had been changed by the aging process in the wood. It was like nothing else he had ever tasted, and he declared it deliciously different, which remains the drink's motto to this day. This is one version of the story, at least. Some say that the story is just a legend. This is also stated by Werner's son. In a 1936 interview, James Werner Jr. admitted that the formula was not developed by his father until the war was over. This was also confirmed in a 1962 interview with former company president James Werner Davis. According to the 1911 trademark application on Werner's as a name for ginger ale and extract, Werner's ginger ale first entered the market in 1880, not 1866. Though this seems like great evidence that would disprove the whole 1866 story, I have not found any proof that this said interview exists. So I cannot confirm or deny either of the stories. And plus, there have been younger sodas with confusing histories, so this is understandable. But, but even if Werner's was created just in 1880, it would still be older than most sodas, such as Coca-Cola and Dr. Pepper. Now, like most pharmacists, James Werner had a soda fountain and was selling his ginger ale. Werner's opened a drugstore of his own on 233 Woodward Avenue at the corner of Clifford Street and sold his ginger ale at its soda fountain. For years, the only place you could buy Werner's was from a fountain in James Werner's Pharmacy in downtown Detroit. But as demand grew, Dr. Werner began to sell his product to other soda fountains. James was also a perfectionist. He reportedly maintained a firm stance with his Werner's concerning even seemingly minute details. Pharmacies are required to install special equipment in order to properly serve the soda. The doctor was vigilant about each ingredient, pointedly treating the soda with the same consistency and attention that he paid to his prescriptions. It is said that he would not sell a glass of Verner's if the temperature reached above 45 degrees Fahrenheit in the glass. As its fame grew, Verner's became available throughout the Midwest. A plant was soon opened in Detroit so that Verner's could mass produce locally. The factory would continually expand with the company's increasing success. In 1896, Verner's closed his drugstore and opened a soda farm closer to the city center on the Woodward Avenue south of Jefferson Avenue, near the ferry docks on the Detroit River to concentrate on ginger ale business alone. Sadly, on October 29, 1927, James Verner died. James Verner was 84 when he passed away. His family joked that he did not retire until hours before his death. His son, James Verner Jr., became the president of the company. Expansion continued throughout Prohibition as many sows did due to alcohol being illegal. Just prior to World War II, Verner's built a 230,000 square foot bottling plant and headquarters, encompassing an entire city block on Woodward Avenue. But in the late 1950s, when the city of Detroit proposed construction of Cobo Hall and other riverfront projects, the land swap had to be negotiated, and Verner's moved its bottling plant and headquarters to the location of an old civic exhibition hall at 4501 Woodward Avenue, incorporating many of the popular features of the old plant. Tours of the Verner's plant, old and new, were a major tourist attraction. 
1962, Verner's introduced Verner's One Calorie, now called Diet Verner's. Shortly after the introduction of the new soda, the Verner's family sold out the first succession of the owners in 1966, which made Verner's now sold nationally. The company was next acquired by American Consumer Products and then by the United Brands. The flagship Detroit bottling plant was shut down by the United Brands in 1985 with the local rights to bottle Verner's granted to Pepsi-Cola. The Woodward Avenue plant was later demolished, being replaced by a parking structure for Wayne State University. Verner's was purchased by a and Beverages in 1987, which was in turn purchased by Canberra Schweppes. Today, the Verner's brand is owned by Dr. Pepper Snapple Group of Plano, Texas. But as history moves on, we should not forget the many slogan and advertisements Verner's used over the many years. Advertising in the early 1900s used the slogan, Detroit's Drink. According to its trademark application, it began using the slogan, Deliciously Different, in 1921. The label was formerly read, Aged Four Years in Wood, which was changed some years ago to, Flavored Aged in Oak Barrels. And again, 1996, to Barrel Aged Bold Taste. And currently notes, Barrel Aged Three Years Bold Taste. The apostrophe in the name Verner's was dropped in the late 1950s. For a time in the mid 1980s, Verner's used the slogan, It's what we drink around here. The gnome mascot named Woody was used from the start of the 20th century until 1987, when it was dropped by AW Brands in favor of new packaging. But Woody had returned to the packaging by the early 2000s. As recently of October 2013, Verner's featured a picture of Woody with the slogan, Michigan's original since 1866. Plus a picture of a barrel with the slogan, barrel aged, bold taste. And with his popularity staying so strong over a hundred years, you can see celebrities like Amy Poehler on the show Perks and Recreation Drink It, as well as Arnold Schwarzenegger drinking some Verner's in this photo. Obviously, the soda has fans who love its flavor, so let's see what me, Steven, and Tim think of it. Hi guys, it's Tyler here. I'm with, here with Tim and Steven, and we are going to be reviewing the first ginger ale but on here, and that is Verner, v Verner's. I hope I'm saying this correctly. Verner's. Ver Verner's or Verner's, which is the original ginger ale soda, which I think is pretty cool. Even though it's not the original, it's not the first, it is the longest lasting ginger ale in existence. So we are going to be trying it, you know, seeing our thing. Sadly with me, ginger ale is mostly a hit and miss. For me, it's usually a miss. No, same here. I like, and I like it. So. But there's been several ginger ales I'm okay with, so let's so see how we this have the whole goes. range here. Yes, exactly. It smells. This is weird. It smells it like smells good. It smells like more of a lemon lime to me. It does. Yeah, it's not. Uh, it, mm, yeah, I wouldn't say lemon lime. It just smells like it smells sweeter. Yeah. It says the original ginger soda, so maybe yeah. it's not going for ginger. Ale, so to speak, but maybe. From what I know, that the they definitely like the fact that they have lots of good spices in there, and this is as they portray, uh, portray. So right. let's take the plunge. Mm -hmm. Well, that was interesting. It's not like most ginger ales I've had. This one's like <clears throat> most ginger ales are pretty consistent in flavor, where each three times I took a drink it tasted slightly different and there was a lot of different spices and a lot of flavor going around everywhere and it, it's pretty good actually. Mm. I certainly don't dislike it. Um, I, d I tasted something very different before I started feeling the ginger aftertaste. But this is just, it, it, it's interesting, but not in a way that's off-putting. Yeah, no, this, um, for me, this soda is very interesting. It has a, of course, I could tell there's lots of different spices in here. The soda is aged for, actually, as they put three years, the soda is aged for flavor. And uh, it does add to it. It's strange, after the flavor starts to sell, you actually taste like a pepper, pepper-type spice in your mouth just settling. And it's... Interesting. It's a lot different because most ginger ales are just carbon copy of everything other ginger I've ever had. This one's a lot different. It's just as Stephen put it. It's 
it's not offsetting either, though. It's different enough to be good, in my opinion. Mm. So, ratings, Tim, you should go first, because you spoke first. Well, tie on to that. I don't know if it was just you guys, but this was a very carbonated soda. Oh, yeah, no, it's very carbonated. So. I agree. Yeah. Um, give me 8.5. Five two out of ten. Eight point two eight point five two out of ten, is that what you said? That is what he said. Okay, okay. I'm going to give it a six out of ten because I don't love it, but it's good enough to not be just an average basic rating. Well yeah, for my rating, you guys probably tell I don't dislike because I'm still drinking it, so now I can definitely swallow it down. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give this a seven point seven five. <laughs> Uh, sorry, seven, yeah, seven point seven five. So yeah, kind of like Tim's rating. It's He's giving one of my ratings. Yeah, it's it's a good, it's a very good ginger ale. It's a lot different, and yeah, it's good. Just like I said, all the spices and everything blends well. As me and Steven don't like ginger ale, it was a surprise to us that we found this ginger ale rather enjoyable. And Tim, who loves ginger ale, liked the soda too. Verner's has a unique flavor that is different from most ginger ales that I have ever tasted. As I drink it, I could taste the many different spices in the soda, which I feel makes it not only different from most ginger ales, but many sodas that I have tried. This soda also enlightened me on its history and its dedicated fan base. While researching on Verner's, I found some of the most passionate fans for this soda. After researching on the soda and drinking it for myself, I can actually say that this soda is deliciously different. Hey everyone, thank you for watching my video. If you want to keep updated on future videos, you can subscribe. You can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Also, if you wish to see more, here is my last so documentary on Doctor Enough. Or click here if you want to see a game theory on the game Mass Effect. Thank you for watching.